Hey folks, uh, I'm here with Masia, and we're going to be talking. Hello. Hello. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, about the Utah Consilience Conference, uh, which is coming up less than three weeks away. Uh, so definitely excited about it. We're going to give you a little uh, brief overview about what we have coming up. So it is April 12th and 13th, Eastern Time, 9 to 5. Um, and of course, it's online. Uh, and we're really excited about it. So. Uh, we're here to share yeah, some of it. coming up soon, and we're in the inner circle of Utah. We're organizing all of the presentations and all, all of the onboarding for the conference. We want to share with you guys a little bit of what we're planning, what you can expect to see. Absolutely. So put it on your calendars. Uh, you can attend for free, just like last year. We felt like, uh, you know, so this is our second annual. Last year was a big success. We heard from our uh, participants last year that the symposia whereby they had sort of, the, you know, the presenters got a chance to present and then really engage in dialogue and then engage the audience in dialogue. Those were the most well-received ones. Uh, so we are really going with that as the primary format this year because an opportunity for this hub of ideas to come together, exchange ideas, uh, see what mutates, see what grows, see what uh, blossoms. Uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, I have to confess, I'm pretty excited that we decided to go with the you talk theme this year. Um, uh, I'm so, very excited about that, too. And that's a major shift from last year. Major, I mean, in, in terms of the framing, the feel of the conference, I feel like it's going to be similar in that, you know, we'll welcome several different perspectives and theories. You're going to see that there's a wide diversity of topics in the presentations. But we do have this nexus point of bringing those ideas into you talk and comparing and contrasting and critiquing you talk as well. Um, so that's a frame shift from last year's. Absolutely. So last year we had Utah sort of in the background, our efforts uh, in the Utah inner circle, bringing folks together certainly was present, um, but it wasn't front and center. This year that shifts a little figure grand shift uh, and Utah is coming on uh, pretty much center. And we'll really see, I'm really interested to see uh, what emerges in the heels of this. Um, I really, you know, obviously I'm biased, uh, but I'm really hoping that folks can see that we really have an opportunity to yoke together the natural sciences, the human psyche, and the collective wisdom traditions through Utah in just a qualitatively different way, in a way that makes a lot of sense, in a way that has enormous number of applications, and really should be old news. That's, you know, from my vantage point, a lot of this just should be like baked into our understanding. It just hasn't been realized, and Utah can help us do that. And maybe in the decades to come, it will become old news, and uh, this will be uh, part of the start of that. So... Like, yeah, I think one way of seeing this frame shift as well is, you know, the first conference had the consilience title and it was bringing a wide variety of perspectives from different disciplines and with the aspiration for consilience. And this one is sort of saying, well, you talk is a consilience system and it can be this attractor that actually uh, pulls all these different ideas into a consilient point. Um, so. I think that's a helpful way to view it. Amen. Let me share the screen. Uh, we'll certainly put this in the notes where people can go. Uh, but this is where the conference uh, screen is. I'm bringing this up. Here it is, the Utah. Thanks to Christian Gross uh, and, and uh, for setting this up and giving us the same uh, an elaborated version of last year. Uh, so here it is, the 12th and 13th. Uh, and what is that, like 19 days away, not even three weeks. Um, and you can either go for free uh, this will cost us about $10 a person. Uh, so we do invite you to help us offset the costs. Uh, none of us are unbelievably independently wealthy. So we appreciate any help you can give there. Um, but it's easy to register. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we'll make sure you can reach out to us uh, in terms of you talk world. We'll deal, deal with any questions. Let me give you a little rundown. There are a couple of uh, things that I'm going to skip over and I'll let Masia deal with because there's a really, in addition to this being um, sort of about you talk. I'm excited about that. There's a really exciting Brazil element to this. Um, I'll talk about sort of the uh, English element, uh, but there's a Brazil Portuguese element of this. This is super exciting. Uh, that's being put on by Nexus, which Masi is a leader in. So uh, I'll give a preview of what Lovely. that is. Please. Um, so oh. the idea, like I said, is to bring you talk to the forefront this time and connect the ideas in relationship to you talk. Um, and a major thing in you talk is that it's a very, it's at a broad, high level of abstraction and it's meta theoretical approach and descriptive metaphysical approach to knowledge. And I think one of the, uh, one of the aspirations is that this point of view will be 
will be able to cross cultural borders and be true not only in the U.S. and Europe and the metamodern um, spaces that we already know that these ideas um, can um, agree with other people's perspectives. But what about if we bring it to another country like Brazil, which is where I am now? Um, and will you talk's ideas drive with people uh, here who know some you talk, but are not totally into the system yet, not totally into the meta modern sensibility yet, but have very valuable ideas that can um, have good relations with those. Um, so it's sort of a test to see, you know, does can you talk also make sense of ideas here, and can you talk cohere these notions cross culturally? That's great. Uh, and I would say developmentally, my understanding, you know, the frame is really uh, sort of you talk is serving as a kind of a backdrop glue for the Nexus group, kind of the way it did last year. Um, and so it's a, and, and it enables us to kind of see ways to make connections. It doesn't force people into that box, uh, but it helps pull that coherence together. And then it will grow from there, or at least if it's a successful system, it should be able to grow. And I'm really excited the way you've been able to pull um, cool things together and cool people together. Um, and, and it's super cool to bridge out into the different language systems and into different international perspectives. So um, that's exciting. Um, so let me just hit a couple of highlights for you. So uh, at 9 a.m., I'm going to start us off uh, with a little 45 minute presentation, first gathering people together, uh, getting us sort of oriented. And I'm going to give a quick sort of summary after we get oriented to the conference on just what is you talk. Um, and really, that's one of the whole goals of the conference is to kind of be like, OK, you, this is a big, broad system. We really have to um, home it down, hone and home, uh, sharpen it and clarify it and then home it in particular frames of reference. My goal in that is to get really uh, clear on what the essence of you talk is uh, and so we can be a shared ground uh, of understanding. Um, and then we have uh, after that, we have our first uh uh, invited address on mer emergentism and naturalism. Super excited about this, but Benita Roy, John Verveke, Alexander Bard, and myself. Uh, and this will be the only one that's going on here because it's an invited address. Uh, so I'll highlight that. Um, and, uh, you know, Bard and his uh, incredible breadth of knowledge and colorful personality will be there. John and I will be, and he'll be talking about his transcendental emergentism. John and I will be talking about transcendent naturalism. And Benita Roy will be uh, bringing her powerful perspective of fierce naturalism. And we're going to see where the differences are, where the overlap is. It's going to be a powerful conversation. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, a couple others I want to hit on. Uh, Jason Storm is a leading theorist in metamodernism, wrote a great book called Metamodernism and the Future of Theory. Uh, and Brendan Graham Dempsey, uh, a powerful thinker that everybody, many people know in the space. Um, he's going to bridge and work between you talk and uh, metamodernism from uh, Jason Storm's perspective and show the synergy there. I think that's going to be a really exciting one. Um, also, I'll jump ahead to Saturday here. Uh, John and I uh, will kick us off with, with an hour long conversation uh, about recursive relevance realization in relation uh, specifically to the influence matrix. And our goal here is to really use these two frames uh, to show how when two people come together, like <laughs> even us in this conversation, um, how the recursive relevance realization frame, how we track each other, and then how the process dimensions, the core process dimension of social influence, relational value, and then the power, love, and freedom elements are constantly being regulated in iterative feedback loops. Um, and if you have that lens, you can really watch sort of the participatory dance of people in relation in a very powerful way. I look forward to uh, sharing that perspective. i that one too. So... I'll highlight one other one and then I'll actually and then I'll go to the conclusion. I'll let it, um, you know, in terms of sort of a, a vision for how to be in the world that's different and embody practical, philosophical way of being in the world that transforms or has the potential to transform uh, us. And I mean, like us as in humanity away from our neurotic tendencies to get trapped in our little caves and our egoic gripping and our uh, there is a presentation here by Rob Scott. Bruce Alderman and Baron Short, um, that I think is going to start fuse together some really powerful, you know, I'll put them under the heading of mindfulness practices. Uh, but you tick that Baron Short develops as sort of a pathway to develop his structure of philosophical reflection and mindfulness into you talk. That's super cool. Rob Scott, people know this channel. I'm a huge fan of his fundamental shift. 
Uh, and the wisdom of Bruce Alderman uh, is, is, is always pervasive, uh, but his analysis of TSK, uh, that's time, space, knowledge, uh, inquiry, uh, which is a kind of mindfulness, Eastern mindfulness practice that bridges into the West. I think that's going to be a really cool session. Uh, I really look forward uh, to that, and I encourage people to check that out. Um, there are all these sessions are really cool. The last one I'll just highlight here um, is one uh, that Layman Pascal is going to be leading as we begin to close out the conference. Uh, that's on science, wisdom, and God. Um, and as we think about sort of the transcendent, the bridge between science and transcendence and the concept of wisdom, uh, it's also a nod to a metamodern spirituality conference uh, that's going to be happening in May uh, that Layman will be leading on the concept of God and Brendan will be hosting. Uh, so I really like the fact that I'm br we're bridging this little community, Utah Community and Consilience Conference um, to Brendan's uh, Sky Meadow Retreat uh, program in May. So uh, those are just some of the highlights. Uh, I think we have a total of 16 different symposia. Uh, Masi, you want to tell a little bit about the whole Nexus thing? I'll jump up to the top here. and uh, Very briefly, there. I'll very briefly state uh, the general topics that we'll be going through in the four symposia that we'll be hosting in Portuguese. They will be fully in Portuguese, uh, but you do have an option on Zoom to turn on captions in case they if you're an English speaking person and you're interested in attending those, you can turn on captions on Zoom and um, follow it that way. Uh, but we have really interesting things like new visions for psychotherapy, where I'll, I'll bring the common core perspective for psychotherapy bridging from the common factors approach. If you're in the field, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we'll also have sessions talking about science as a justification system using the UTOC framing um, to understand science as a social endeavor that transcends um, the cultural plan and axiological commitments of science. We'll have a habits and lifestyle lifestyles um, session where we're going to bridge uh, different humanistic, philosophical, and cognitive behavioral and positive psychology as well, uh, perspectives on formation of habits, maintenance of habits, into Utah's perspective through CAST and BIT. If you know Utah, um, you'll remember those ideas. We'll have another session on meaning crisis and how that connects to new visions for cognitive science and psychology, including an interbehaviorist view, which I'm very curious to learn more about um, in that session. And all of those sessions will be moderated by me bringing the Utah frame into them to see how Utah can help make sense of those that plurality of perspectives into a coherent nexus point. Um, so that's a little bit of the Brazil nexus side of the conference. Lovely. Yeah, no, that's super exciting. And so that, uh, to me, what that shows is the applicability, the growth and reach uh, of it. Uh, and again, to watch that uh, basic transformation happen in a different language, and you've been teaching me about that, not that I'm a great student, but teaching me at least about out of what the uh, opportunities and problems of translation are, but to see it grow in the Brazilian Portuguese community has been, uh, and you've been a leader in that, and I'm really uh, proud and happy about to see that. So um, that's Utah 2024, April 12th and 13th. Uh, we're hoping to have a similar kind of showing as last year. We're actually have more presentations this year when you add the Nexus line. So we're doing international. Let's see doing Utah. Consilience continues. Lovely. Super excited for it. Go and register. We're going to drop all of the links in the description. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We'll hope to see you there.